Today, this would be my first talk uh, in Bitcoin, uh, top on Bitcoin topic without a presentation, without any slides. I would like to make this talk more a sort of dialogue where I would share the strategic vision on how these new technologies may actually affect the Bitcoin landscape and even more broadly, potentially cultural landscape and how the future world where these technologies are got adopted may look like. And of course, I, that's why I will highly appreciate your feedback. I will try to balance between uh, general uh, thinking and uh, some technical details and also technical insights, because without the technical uh, deep understanding of what these technologies are, it is really hard to comprehend about what they can potentially do regarding the human society and even culture. And I would like to start from the end, from the Lightning Protocol, and go through Nostr and RGB, coming finally to some very long-term transhumanistic things, which I think also might be affected by these technologies. Uh, a few words, a few words who I'm, I am. Uh, I'm representing LNPBP Standards Association. This is a non-profit established in Switzerland, which uh, targets the development, design of new protocols and creation of reference implementations for these new protocols on top of Bitcoin and Lightning. You may think about that as a standard body driving the creation of layer two and layer three protocols. We've created LNPBP Association in 2019 together with Jack Mazuko, and throughout this time we were supported uh, by multiple companies who would like to build their solutions on the layer two and layer three, including BitPhoenix, including Fulgur Ventures, including Hoya Foundation, including Pandora Prime Company, and Diba Company from the United States. These are current members of this association, and all those companies who are interested in building with RGB or other technologies we are doing, you are all invited to join the association because you may think about that something like W3C standarding body or, or IETF thing, but for Bitcoin and Lightning world. So you can contribute your ideas, you can contribute uh, your developers, and you can participate in the design of the new protocols, including protocols for lightning, decentralized exchange, and many other things. So let me start with the lightning network. The lightning network was a real big advance. It was the first time we were able to scale blockchain-based solution, which is Bitcoin, in the uh, in the amount of the transactions and in the speed of transaction. And today everybody knows about existence of Lightning Network. Well, I'm not saying a lot about the Ethereum guys, for instance, because frequently they haven't even heard about the things that it does exist. But anyway, uh, among the guys who are concerned about privacy, who are concerned about self sovereignty, I don't think that there is anybody who haven't heard about the Lightning. But I would like to give a different point of view of what Lightning Network is. Of course, Lightning Network is a payment network. We all know that. And this payment network is made of Lightning channels, payment channels. It's a multi-six, it's two of two multi-six as of today. Uh, potentially, it's important to remember that there is nothing that restricts Lightning channels to be two of two multi-six. They can be any form of multi sig N of N, and we call that multi-peer channel. And this concept of multi-peer channel first appeared in, form of, in, the, in the idea of lightning channel factories, where you can construct a factory across multiple peers, such that these peers can lately create individual channels without doing any transaction on chain. But the use case for the such things goes much beyond. With the N of N multi-six, you can do things like liquidity pools. 
And for instance, we are using N of N multi-seq uh, channels of Lightning. We are developing and designing how they may work for RGB, where they will be used uh, as the liquidity pools for decentralized exchange nodes. So this is Lightning channel. It's not restricted to two of two case. Unfortunately, for many years, Lightning Network wasn't able to maintain the pace of uh, innovation to add the support for the things which a lot of people were expecting for, starting from the channel splits, starting from the... Uh, finally, we have duly funded channels, but it also took a years. Channel factories uh, and uh, Taproot is still not there. So the time is passing, but the Lightning Network doesn't able to address all these needs. And that was one of the reasons why Nostr has appeared, as I will be showing later, addressing one of the lightning problems. And, uh, but I'm a bit ahead of time, so I will go back to the question of lightning network. So we have lightning payment channels, N of N, or they can be even N of M, multi six, meaning that you may have certain element of trust introduced in channels, and you may even see uh, lightning channels with multiple peers, where not all the peers are ne required to do the signature as a case of side chains, small side chains. So there is a, a gray area between the lightning network and blockchain world where one can transform into another. So it's not something that is really, really dis distinct. But it's, of course, a layer on top of the base layer, which provides the core security, which is Bitcoin and Bitcoin proof of work. Even more, what would be exciting is when a frost, a technology developed for Schnorr signatures, which is supposed to bring a N of M multi six to top root world. You know probably that there is a music two, which allows you to do an N of N, the same number of signers required to sign uh, multi six in. Uh, top root, but to do N of M signatures, you need something else. And that something else is the Frost scheme. This Frost scheme is designed around Shamir secret sharing technology, and it allows you not just to construct N of M multi sig like a normal Bitcoin uh, wallets before, but it also allows you to build a dynamic set of participants such that you can remove some of the signers or add some of the signers, not modifying the key. And later I will also mention that in context of Nostra, where it is important for maintaining a corporate type of accounts for the social network where Schnorr signatures are also used. So Frost bringing multi six to Taproot also brings dynamic multi six to Bitcoin for the first of time. And what it can bring to the Lightning Network and Lightning Channel is the fact that you now may have a multi-peer channels with a dynamic set of participants where you do not need to do an on-chain transaction to update the set of participants. And that is again important in the context of creation of liquidity pools or DAOs, which actually can be run as a multi-peer lightning channel around the lightning node. You see how big use cases, potential use cases for the lightning channels are. But there is even more about lightning network. Because what lightning network is, is it's not just a network of channels. If you think about channels as two of two multi-six or just multi-six in a more generic way, you may uh, say that lightning network is the largest atomic swap coordination network. Lightning Network is the coordinator of atomic swaps of different multi-sig wallets. So thinking in other way about Lightning Network, imagine that there are multi-sigs and some of the participants of these multi-sigs participate multiple multi-sigs. That is network. So, for instance, I'm participating multi-sig with somebody and somebody else, and that is already a network with the three participants. And what Lightning Network does, and the only purpose why Lightning Network exists as a peer-to-peer -peer network, is to build a protocol for coordinating atomic updates across these multi-sigs. And the way Lightning Network coordinates that upgrades is called HTLC, hash time uh, locked contracts, 
And uh, that, but it is not the only way how you can do that. Uh, there is already at, at least two proposals. One of them is PTLC, which are based on adapter signatures and Schnorr signatures. So the Lightning Network is the way how you coordinate different atomic swaps, swaps across certain number of participants. And that is the task that Lightning Network is designed to solve. However, there are a lot of other use cases which are required in the world of Bitcoin. And there were attempts of using Lightning Network as a peer-to-peer -peer network for those use cases as well. And all those attempts have failed, or at least they haven't got a sufficient adoption. You may, the, the first thing you think, okay, we now have a peer-to-peer -peer network, we can use it for sending messages. And that was uh, one of, or even several startups tried to do, for instance, things to use Lightning Network for sending messages. Unfortunately, it had two main issues. The first issue is the fact that Lightning Network is really slow to innovate and evolve, and the pull request bringing the support for, of messages to the Lightning Network is being discussed for more than two years already, and it hasn't been merged yet. So it's taking forever, and sometimes I'm saying that Lightning Network is more ossified as of today, as the, even more ossified as of today than Bitcoin layer one. Uh, the second problem with the message sending messages across the Lightning Network or building a social network based on Lightning Network is the fact that Lightning Network designed to coordinate upgrades between peers, between participants of different multi-six, which I, I have just discussed. So to send a message from you to, to him, for instance, it would involve me such that now I have to be online not only for routing payments, but also for message passing. As well, I have no financial responsibility to pass the message. Unlike with HTLC, unlike with the payments, I have nothing at stake, so I can just discard the message and it will never get through, and you wouldn't even know about that. So the low reliability of this system, as well as a consumption of a lot of traffic information, it's basically because of the way the routing works in the Lightning Network, you have to create another layer of the routing, like in IP protocol, which consumes a lot of memory and it requires a lot of computing potential, which is not necessary for a simple case of messaging. So the Lightning Network having a dramatic uh, impact on the payment industry and able to create things, which I will be talking about later as a Bitcoin finance, especially when combined with RGB, is a not right tool to build many other cases like social network or messaging systems. And that's what was changed when Nostr has appeared. And what Nostr is, uh, it actually took a very simple idea. Let's take a JSON message, kind of structured message, uh, put some content there, and then sign it with a public key using Schnorr signatures. And that signature actually proves the authenticity of the message, proves that it's actually you, how the holder of this key, who has produced this message. And whenever you post or send this message to somebody, the receiver can verify that it is indeed you. And now Nostra introduces the concept of relay. A relay is a server or a daemon or a program that runs somewhere which you can connect to and upload your messages and ask for the other messages the server does know. So this relay network of Nostr is not a P2P network per se. They said that Nostr network is not a P2P network. However, it is still a decentralized network and network made for self-sovereign applications because if you'd like to avoid censorship of your messages, you just power up your relay and publish your messages to that relay, and everybody who is interested in reading your messages, they connect to your relay, and they always will be able to retrieve these messages. So we have a censorship resistance without the complexity of the peer-to-peer -peer network. No di distributed hash tables like in Torrent are involved, no routing like in Lightning Network are involved, and we, that's why we've got the boost of these applications around the Nostr protocol. 
Especially the success was the integration of lightning payments into the Nostro network. So this combination allows you to build a new whole layer of social networking based on economical models. And at the last part of the presentation of the talk, I will be saying about potential for artificial intelligence applications in this sphere as well. So Nostr solved part of the Lightning Network problems, and combined together, they can do even more. However, however Nostr is not also perfect. There are some issues with Nostr which reduce its ability to scale for a larger number of consumers. First of all, uh, there is no requirements for relay which size of messages they should use and how they should filter the messages. On one side, it's a good thing because uh, this avoids a certain form of centralization, like of policies. But on the other side, it opens a way how the network can be the coherent on the information it distributes. I think that there would be a day where people will be attacking relays with a large attachments, large amounts of data. Relays would start filtering those messages. Different relays will do that in a different way. And you will have a situation where in your feed on Nostra you will see that there is a message, but you don't have an image, and you don't know which relays you should, you should connect. So this will all damage the future adoption of Nostra network. Another problem with the Nostr that, uh, from what we know, from mobile developers, for instance, use of JSON creates a huge, uh, it is the most power and time consuming uh, thing in the Nostr, in mobile application. So it would be nice if Nostr would be able to support a binary format. Another problem is the choice of the elliptic curve and the signature scheme, because Nostr just simply followed Bitcoin. However, uh, the problem with that, that Bitcoin curve, you, the curve used in Bitcoin protocol, is highly inefficient in speed. And today, mobile clients, Nostra mobile clients, are unable to uh, verify the signatures. You know, on your mobile phone, you do not check the signatures of the messages you receive. Because if the mobile application would do that, your power, your battery will run out in a matter of 10 minutes. So that actually introduces a trust which should be avoidable in a network such as Nostr. And mobile applications are starting relying on the relays. They're starting trusting relays in questions of uh, the origin of the messages. So that's all the negative things we, we see in uh, Nostr, which may affect its adoption. And because of that, the, the LNP BP Association I was talking about, we proposed an uh, initiative of creating a refactored Nostr protocol, which we named Renostr, where the Renostr will provide things like binary encoding, it will also introduce a secondary signature scheme which will be based on uh, Edwards curve, ED25519, uh, sorry. And this is much faster, faster curve, and it is also the curve used by GPG and open SSH applications, so it's a more standard way. And with that, mobile applications would be able to provide full potential of don't trust, verify things without burning the battery and phone life. Uh, finally, this Renostra initiative, it also uh, introduces a way how you can uh, do end-to-end -end encryption with the noise protocol, because as of today, Nostr didn't encrypt any data at all, and it actually relies on TLS, which is normal way how the data in web are encrypted, but TLS is not an end-to-end -end encryption we are actually looking for and would like to have. So that's the Nostr. Finally, RGB. RGB, I don't know how much of you have heard about that. RGB is an old uh, thing in a town. It's there since 2017 or even 16. It's being actively developed since 2019. And what RGB does is it is a smart contract system for Bitcoin and for Lightning Network. 
And this smart contracting system is based on Peter Todd's ideas of the client-side validation. A very simple concept that to do a smart contract, you don't need to hold all the data in the blockchain such the whole world would see them and validate them. It is only contract participants who need to validate the state of the contract and the history of the contract. So this data, the history of the contract, is not in the blockchain. It is held by the parties of the contract and they do the validation and they pass this data from one party to another party and with that first of all you get a gain of privacy you get a gain of scalability and you can also layer such protocols on top of the lightning network uh, on the other side you need a medium for sending this client-side validated data from peer to peer and we deliberately created RGB as a protocol abstracted from the data layer. It is agnostic of how peers send data to each other. I can print them in a hex encoding on the piece of paper and hand over to another guy and he will scan them. Or I can use uh, email and insert this data as an attachment. Or I can use, I don't know, mesh network I'm absolutely free in the choice of the protocol. But of course, for adoption, it is important to provide something that would be simple to handle. And that's where a Noster comes to the play, because the Noster relay is actually the best way how you can send this client-side validated data from one peer to another. But because this size of this client-side validated data can be quite large, that's why it is really important to introduce changes which we are planning to introduce with things like Renoster, for the Noster to fully support the propagation and exchange of the client-side validated data through the Noster relays. Uh, another important uh, thing I forgot to mention about Nostr is that while Nostr is a relay-based network, not to peer-to-peer -peer network, it has a potential of actual peer-to-peer -peer network because nothing prevents relays from talking and connecting to each other, such that even if you are running your own relay and other peers not posting to your relay, you can connect and list their relays as a trusted relays, or not even trusted because there is no element of trust, you verify the signatures, of relays you are connecting to and downloading messages of other people. So you can start accumulating your own database and manage your own database. So in these terms, uh, Nostra can be seen as a peer-to-peer -peer network for the data propagation, and with that, potentially we will see the emergence of the new search engines, which would be able to index data from multiple relays and provide this information for the clients. Now, this all comes together into a very interesting concept which we call Bitcoin finance. Imagine, uh, with RGB, you may have a different forms of smart contracts and assets in the Lightning Network. With uh, uh, multi-peer channels, and especially Frost, you can construct DAOs, liquidity pools, decentralized exchange. At the same time, you don't want to pollute the Lightning Network and uh, with the traffic which is related to these systems. So you can use a Nostr mechanism and Nostr relay to keep the information related to the smart contracts, starting from the listing the smart contracts, listing the assets, up to the order books and information related to decentralized exchanges or to DAOs. And uh, without polluting Lightning Network, people would be able to search and access that information. Now, from the self-hosting perspective, if you are running your own home server, you may have an Oster relay and Lightning node there, and there will be a multiple ways how you will monetize that other than just routing. You can host the data and be paid in Satoshis. You can uh, index data from the other relays and operate as a decentralized node of decentralized Google-like search engine for other or you can be a part of the liquidity pool or of the centralized exchange and earn fees based on that fact. So this all combination of these three technologies opens new ways how the personal nodes can be monetized and should drive forward the broader use of people 
self-hosting, such they would be investing money into building their own private home server or the cloud, private cloud instance. And with the company which I also represent, Pandora Prime, together with uh, Nodal, we are working on developing such home servers and cloud service such that people can easily start doing self-hosting. Uh, finally, the last thing I was going to talk about is more long-term perspective and artificial intelligence. Well, we are again in certain hype of artificial intelligence, and maybe some of you remember me staying here in 2018 and saying about free AI manifesto that we have to prevent the censorship of artificial intelligence algorithms and models, and that is coming. Now, finally, this prediction has come true, unfortunately. And uh, today we see the European a Union prohibiting open source AI models and other things like that. The, the interesting thing with the Nostr is that Nostr is censorship resistant. And already today you may see in the Nostr network certain AI-based agents, like based probably on chat GPT like models, which reply on your comment and you can even enter into discussions with them. They exist there, they exist in this new network and nothing can stop them from operating. And this network is also combined with the uh, financial power of the Lightning Network. There is a payments and economy involved. Thus, the real reality where the models can evolve and where the risk of AI progress can be mitigated is that kind of uh, censorship-resistant network where these models can compete and use the skin of the game principle, playing, into, playing economic games with each other, earning some fees and operating, for instance, as uh, traders who use the funds of their investors to do some trading and then earning the result of that trade, using that to pay for the computing power for the self-hosted nodes which runs these models. And that sort of natural evolution and selection, which may lead to the actual development of AI. But because it is a free market and because uh, there is no monopoly which appears there and which control there, uh, that, that landscape, the chances that some of the mad AI goes crazy and captures all the world are much, much lower when there is just a few models existing in the closed source run by government enterprises or large companies, which kind of case where probably this would be the scenario would, which would happen. So combination of these three technologies actually opens the road to the future where the civilization may consist of multiple agents, not necessarily humans, interacting and talking to each other via economical means and secured by economical means, being f at the same time free and censorship resistant, based on strong privacy, end-to-end -end encryption, and censorship resistance. So that's the future we are trying to contribute to building and we're inviting all of you also to join and participate in the efforts which we are doing. Thank you very much. Okay, so you don't... Uh, cool, so we have, a, we have a good 20 minutes that we can do Q&A. Um, do we have a first question from the audience for Maxim? on any of the points that he touched on, Lightning, Nostra, and RGB. Come on, guys. Um, regarding Nostra, um, obviously it's um, pseudonymous. People use pub keys to communicate, but we see something that basically people reuse existing identities from Twitter, and they just go over to Nostra. Do you see this as a, given that it's pretty much public information, right? Like it's an append-only log, it never goes away, that we're actually like having a even bigger privacy honeypot created um, than on Bitcoin? Because in Bitcoin, at least, you can create like new addresses for every transaction, but on Nostra, I think, I think no one does that. Everybody is reusing the same pop key. What's your thought about that? 
Well, uh, I think that uh, first of all, you can use hierarchical derivation. So if you'd like to have multiple identities on Noster, just use hierarchical derivation, still save just a single seed phrase, but you can run uh, any number of identities that way. Uh, so that's actually not a problem, and they would not be linked to each other until would you, you would expose the original XPUB. Another thing is that uh, you can also, already today without Frost, you can build things like corporate accounts where you can claim that this set of N pubs is actually uh, corresponds to this organization, and this set of n pubs can be upgradable. So if somebody got fired or you got new people to your marketing team, you can change the subset, and the software would be able still to reassemble and present it in the user interface as some post belonging to a certain brand or an organization. So these things can be solved with existing tools. So the reality is that they are not being used because the adoption still is very low, and the we don't see a lot of brands going into the Nostra, but I think in a matter of months, probably some solutions would be appearing of that sort. Next. So then I'd like to get a little bit deeper into, into RGB, what RGB is, is unlocking, because um, so layer twos and smart contracting uh, on Bitcoin has been a long and ongoing debate with multiple solutions that we have, whether you're using the EVM, uh, merge mine with Bitcoin, or uh, different, different uh, implementations. Um, why don't you expand on us, so you know, specifically um, the use cases that uh, that RGB is unlocking uh, here and doing a lot of the things that we've been talking about doing on Bitcoin for a long time. What are the what are the barriers to to adoption? Is it a liquidity issue? Is it an awareness issue? Um, you know, where are we at at the level of having um, you know smart contracting capabilities on Bitcoin that are not based on script? essentially, yeah, would be a great. Uh, so I already described that RGB uses the client-side validation way of things. So it's a very different way of making a smart contract. And uh, there was a huge debate over so certain years, past years, whether it is possible to do things which are possible with a normal blockchain-based well, normal blockchain -based smart contracts like Ethereum on client-side validation model. And we actually was able to demonstrate that, yes, it is possible. Everything that can be done with EVM style smart contracts can be done with the RGB and client-side validation model. The reality, however, that it has to be done in a very different way. So people think that, okay, we are taking AVM contract and compiling it to RGB, or we rewrite it for RGB, but we maintain the general logic, so there is some smart contract which measures, which does all the stuff. No. In the most of the cases, you don't need to write any code. So, for instance, as I described, a, DAC, a, a liquidity pool or a DAO as a smart contract is actually a lightning multi-peer channel. So you are not writing any specific smart contract code. Instead of writing code, you're setting up a proper uh, model for the multi-peer channel. That is your code. And uh, by doing that's why the paradigm of creating smart contracts in RGB is very different. But from the other hand, you have a very clear distinction between the parties which are involved in the contracts and what they can do and can't do. Because in the Ethereum world, there are one things which are promised by the developers, and there are other things which happen in reality. So, for instance, they may. Uh, do a mistake in the code such that certain smart contract function can be po called by the parties who shouldn't be able to call this function, or they have a de dedicated set of keys which allows them to update the smart contract. Here with RGB, you don't have this thing in an implicit way. All these facts are explicit in the way the smart contract is structured by itself. So the use cases RGB allows is you can build 
uh, uh, IMM based uh, exchanges. You can build uh, stable coins based on collaterals like Bitcoin itself, which operate in uh, algorithmic way. You can do uh, DAOs, different forms of DAOs. And all of that will be sharded because RGB is sharded by its construction and design where each smart contract is isolated from the other smart contracts. There is no RGB network, there is no RGB blockchain, there is no single place where these things live. They just live on your machines, on the machines of those who participate smart contracts. So let me ask a question and, and you know this is just coming out you know, my rea reaction to this. Is it even uh, proper to be calling what RGB is doing a smart contract? Is, or well, should there be a different term for it? Uh, I, I Are think you just it, using a convenient nomenclature because of the functionality that people understand under that? Or should we actually be not calling it smart contracts on Bitcoin and should be calling it some other? Well, it is certainly contracts. Uh, it is, uh, if even multi-sig a smart contract, I don't see any reason not to call what RGB does as a smart contract. And also RGB is Turing complete. So meaning that, uh, well, in the same sense as Ethereum Turing complete. Of course, there are bounds on the execution time and amount of operations which can be done. Uh, so I think the smart contract is the proper t term to, to use here. Okay. So... We have, do you see less resistance to experimenting and implementing these processes on Bitcoin? Where are the developers at? Are we seeing developers moving from other ecosystems to start developing? Are we winning or losing, losing developers? Uh, well, for, for, for now, we are not winning developers because uh, the involvement of community in RGB is still quite low. So we have uh, multiple companies building on RGB already, and there is a big interest to RGB. But still, it's nothing comparing to what happens in the DeFi ecosystem, for instance, or even <laughs> with ordinals. Well, one of the reasons is because RGB is it's not using any token. It had haven't any ICO. It have it has no marketing budget. It has no funding. So basically, everything that happens with Bitcoin, even with Lightning Network, there were company who received a venture funding and was leading the development of Lightning Network. Here, nothing like that. The the amount of budget that RGB was created over the last four years, with we are talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, not even millions. And uh, many of this money are coming from just people, not even some players, including myself. So I was self-funding the development for more than half, uh, one and a half year. So of course, it is hard to get it adopted because there is no body which sponsors developers uh, because like, you know, for instance, even for Liquid, and for many blockchain-based smart contracts, there were bodies who was providing money to developers to start building with their technology. Here, we the argument the argument has been, though, is that that funding has tainted that development in those products, which is why it is we've seen also yes. adoption not happening. So yes. it's sort of like the so antidote. It, it would to be slower. But potentially, if and when it would happen, it would, it would be much more sustainable. And I mean that once it happened, it won't go back. But it is really hard to get it starting happening because there is nobody who is pouring money into people starting building with RGB. It's their just desire and their own investment into starting using this thing. Cool. Additional questions, those sort of like top out mine? Uh, just I learned some interesting things about Nostra. So uh, very curious about uh, the the verification not happening on the client side due to like resources. So at the moment, is it like is in the in the relays that we have deployed? Is it the default to actually verify on behalf of the trusting client of the messages, or is this like an opt-in thing? Or, or are there relays out there that are completely dumb 
and are just passing messages blindly? Well, uh, uh, there are many different relays. If you are talking about Nostr, there are many different relays and uh, different implementations. I, I assume that different relays behave differently. I can think that there are some relays who are not doing a proper verification. Not because they are malicious, but because developers are lazy and if they can not verify, they may not verify. Uh, so that's why it's the same problem like with the Bitcoin Core and uh, SPV proofs. So if mobile clients do not verify signatures with a Nostr, this would end badly. And uh, the only way how we can make mobiles verifying signatures is to change the signature algorithm such that it wouldn't drain battery life. And is this potentially like a breaking change to Nostra? Like uh, well, it is, uh, it is a breaking change, but it can be made in a gradual way. So with the Renostra initiative, we introduce the second signature scheme, but we maintain the first one, such that old clients always able to verify new messages. And the new clients will, will probably, well, they have an option to verify, but if they want to drain the battery, the old messages wouldn't be verified and be trusted as of today, but the new messages has ability to be verified by the client supporting the new protocol. Thank you. Which gives me a follow-on question. How do you feel about the, um, the ephemerality of data, right? So how much of this data do, is it that we need to keep around and how much of it can we just abandon and prune just because it's just the flotsam and jetsam of everyday life on the blockchain up until this point at that state of the protocol, at that state of the social network messaging protocol, I mean, do we need to even perpetuate that data? Would, would I, I, I think it should be the same as with the human argument. beings. Yes, I'm very fine with ephemerality, ephemerality because my, my, I, I love to say that digital world can't introduce anything that haven't existed in the physical world before. So the same with the Nostra and ephemerality of the messages. We all have memories and memories do fade. And if I do something here, like something crazy, I put this chair and drop into the wall, uh, it will be maintained before the digital era, it would be maintained in my memory and the memory of people who witnessed that. So I don't have a power to wipe all the memories, but with the time it would fade. And we see that human society was performing okayish for thousands of years with that ephemeral, ephemerality. Now with the Nostra Relay we have the same thing. I can post something, uh, sign it, post a relay, it will be copied to other relays and with the time it will fade. It operates the same way as a crowd memory of the human society. So at least this is the model we are familiar with and we know how it does work. And if somebody needs to keep something, he should write that in a book on the paper or pay to the relay to store the data. And with the, with the storage price getting cheaper and cheaper, I think there might be some archives which will be archiving everything and keeping everything forever and then providing that for a small fee. Awesome. So that we have one more question and then we'll finish it up because we need to do the switch over for the next talks. Hello. So I had a question about Frost earlier because you said that you could have a dynamic multi-sig without having to do an on-chain transaction. So I'm wondering, is there potential for Frost to enable uh, drive chains, like a minor shared multi-sig, without requiring a soft fork like uh, uh, BIP301 or a more generalized covenant like uh, Optic uh, Check Template Verify or any uh, SIGHASH, any prev out? Uh, well, I think the drive chain, the whole idea of drive chain is that miners do vote on chain. There is no multi sig involved. So it may change the way side chains work, like Liquid, where you may have more dynamic federation. But again, the, the, the federation with a side chain, even today, can be dynamic. So there is no specific problem to resolve. So I don't think that Frost, frost changes anything regarding the uh, drive chain thing. Thank you. Can I continue? No, it's good. Cool. Um, 
Thank you so much, Maxim, Thank you. for your time today.